Hello guys. So in this video, we will start to learn about probability distributions, basically probability distribution functions. Okay. So before we jump into probability distribution functions, we have to have a brief understanding of what random variables are. Although I have covered this in my another video, I will quickly refresh it here. Okay. So what are random variables? So in order for you to understand it in simple way, you can treat all the features that we get in our machine learning data set as random variables. Okay. And they can be of two types. One is numerical and other is non-numerical or also called as categorical. Okay. So within numerical, we can have two more types, continuous random variables and discrete random variables. Okay. What are some examples of continuous random variables? It could be height of all the people or all the students in a class, weights of all the students in a class, bank balance of individuals, etc. So why these are called as continuous random variables? Because they are not restricted to only integers like 4, 5, 50, something like that. So they can have continuous values. So when I talk about height, it can be 5.6 feet, 6.2 feet, 7.3 feet, etc. Right? So similarly, weight 70 kg, 72.5 kg, 80.7 kg. Correct? So all these values forms a continuous values right so these are all continuous values so that's why we call them as continuous random variables okay now coming to discrete random variables what are discrete random variables they have they must be integers okay so when i say integers it should be of whole number it should be a whole number okay so what are the examples number of members in a family number of bank accounts that we hold etc okay so for example when we say how many members are there in your family we will always say it in a whole number, right? Either 4, 10, 12, 2, something like this, 1, etc. Right? So we cannot say our family size is 4.5 or 7.3, something like this, right? So that's why these are all called as discrete random variables. Okay. Now coming to non-numerical or categorical random variables, anything that doesn't hold the numerical values can be categorized as categorical random variable. So the simple example would be gender, male, female, trans, unspecified, right? There could be many more, correct? So these are all the examples of categorical random variables, okay? Now that we have seen the basics of random variables, let us see what do we mean by probability distributions. So before we jump into probability distribution functions, we need to understand what is probability distribution, okay? So to explain it in simple terms, let's say we have a random variable x, x is a random variable and we have some outcomes for it, value 1, value 2, value 3, some values we have and these are all the possible values this x can hold, okay. So the example, simple example could be tossing a fair coin, right. So what are the outcomes? It can be either heads or tails, if you treat heads as 1 and tails as 0, this becomes a discrete random variable. Okay. So now what is the probability of getting heads? It's 1 by 2. Probability of getting tails? It's 1 by 2. Correct. So when it comes to probability distribution, what we do? We will construct a table wherein we will list the outcomes in one column and we will list out the corresponding probabilities in another column. So here what I have written? I have written the outcomes, heads tails and their respective probabilities 1 by 2 1 by 2 so this is nothing but probability distribution for what probability distribution for tossing a coin outcomes for tossing a coin okay so if you consider another example let's take an example of rolling a dice six sided die okay so what are the possible outcomes 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay and what are the probabilities for individual elements in the outcome? So it's 1 by 6. Probability of getting 1 is 1 by 6. Probability of getting 2 is 1 by 6. So on and so forth up to probability of getting 6 is equal to 1 by 6. So here in this case, probability of 1 is equal to probability of 2 equal to probability of 3. So on and so forth up to probability of 6. Right? All events in the outcome, individual outcomes have equal probabilities. So, in order to construct a probability distribution for this, what we will do? We will follow the same steps. We will create two columns. In one column, we will list out all the outcomes. And in another column, we will 
we will represent their respective probabilities. So here that's what I have done. 1 has a probability of 1 by 6, getting 2 has a probability of 1 by 6, so on and so forth up to outcome of getting 6 has a probability of 1 by 6. So this is nothing but the probability distribution of what? Distribution of all the outcomes when we roll a die. Okay. So these are all small examples, right? So we had six, only six outcomes. Here we had only two outcomes. The complexity can increase based on the number of outcomes or the number of ways we can get outcomes. So for that, we call it as sample space. Sample space. Okay. So we will talk in detail about sample space when I'm talking about probability in separate week, separate series of videos. But now consider an example of rolling two dice. Okay. Let's say we are rolling two six two six sided dice. Okay. So what are the possible outcomes? The minimum value could be two and the max value could be 12. Right. And we have different ways to get these values. So that's what I have listed here. So this is also called as sample space okay so let's consider this as die 1 dice 1 and this as dice 2 and the minimum value that we can get is 2 and there is only one way we can get how each of those dice will give us the output of 1 okay so this is how we can get a value of 2 right so in how many ways we can get outcome 2 we can get it in only one way, correct? One, one. So similarly, in how many ways we can get outcome three? We can get it in two ways. So either we get two from the dice one and one from the dice two, or we could get two from the dice two and one from the dice one. So there are two possible ways in which we can get value three. Okay. So similarly, there are three possible ways in which we can get the value 4 and similarly there are 4 possible ways in which we can get the value 5. So likewise I have listed all the different ways of possibilities of getting the outcome up to the maximum value 12. Okay. So this entire thing is called as sample space Okay. and now we have to plot or jot down the probability distribution for this particular outcomes. Okay. Now, in order to write down this its probability distribution, what we have to do? We have to write the outcomes. So, there are only definitive outcomes, right? 2 through 12. Okay. So, there are only these many outcomes. But in order to compute the probabilities, we have to consider these sample spaces. So, what is the probability of getting 2? It's only 1 out of 36 different ways. Correct. So, probability of getting 2 will be 1 by 36. Why 36? Because total base of getting all these outcomes is 36. That is our sample space. Okay. Don't worry about this particular term sample space. I will cover this in my other videos. Okay. So now similarly, what is the probability of getting 3? So we can get 3 in 2 ways out of total 36 possible outcomes. Right. So that is 2 by 36. Okay. Similarly, probability of 4, it is 3 by 36. So, likewise, we will list all the probabilities for all the possible outcomes. All the way up to probability of getting 12. So, that is what I have written here. Probability of getting 2, 1 by 36, 3, 2 by 36. Likewise, 7, 6 by 36, 9, 4 by 36. And all the way up to 12, the probability of getting 12 is only 1 by 36. Why? Because we have to get 6 from both the dice. That is the only possible way where we can get the total sum to be 12. Right. So, that is what I have written the probability as 1 by 36. So, provided we have constructed this, what happens if we roll 3 dice? What happens if we roll 4 dice? So, the number of sample space will be increasing exponentially and constructing this type of probability distribution gets difficult and tedious job. Okay. So, what is the solution for that? So, the solution for that is if we can come up with some mathematical function which represents all these probabilities, it will be easy for us to write it in a short form. And this mathematical function 
मैथ्स फंक्शन इज नथिंग बट प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन ओके सो पी डी एफ सो लेट्स नॉट कंफ्यूज द वर्ड पी डी एफ विथ प्रोबेबिलिटी डेंसिटी फंक्शन आई विल क्लियर दैट इन अपकमिंग वीडियोज बट फॉर नाउ लेट एज नॉट एड्रेस पी डी एफ एस प्रोबेबिलिटी डेंसिटी फंक्शन लेट्स जस्ट कॉल इट एज प्रोबेबिलिटी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फंक्शन ओके सो हियर द मैथमेटिकल फंक्शन विच वी विल फॉर्मुलेट इन ऑर्डर टू jot down this probability distribution as probability distribution function okay so here what is this x these are all the possible outcomes and what is this y it's the probability of getting that particular outcome okay so this is the solution that we have arrived at now based on since it's a mathematical function right we can actually plot it since it's a mathematical function we can plot these functions okay and based on the shape those take we have divided it into multiple forms so the probability distribution functions can be of multiple shapes and each shape will get its own name and we have for example normal distribution uniform distribution binomial bernoulli poisson log normal and there are hell lot of other distributions okay and these are some of the most important that i have listed here probably if you want i can give you all the list a list of all the probability distributions okay so let's not worry about that but these are some of the examples based on the shape of the probability distribution function that we get when we plot it Th they those are named accordingly okay now these probability distribution functions will have certain parameters okay so now if you take normal distribution so this is how a normal distribution usually looks like so it's a bell shaped curve okay so this is not exactly bell shaped curve but you can consider this as bell shaped curve for the explanation part okay so for example this normal distribution has mainly two parameters one is mean represented by mu and other one is standard deviation represented by this particular letter sigma right so this is standard deviation so like this there are many different parameters associated with different forms of probability distribution functions okay now you know that we have when it comes to numerical random variable we have two types correct one is continuous and another one is discrete right so based on which random variable we are trying to plot probability distribution function there are mainly two types of probability distribution functions so one is probability mass function which is applied for discrete random variables and other thing is probability density function which is applied for continuous random variables so for continuous random variables we have probability density function and for discrete random variables we have probability mass function okay and for both of this probability mass function and probability density function we have a common distribution function called as cumulative distribution function okay so we can construct for discrete random variables we can have probability mass function and cumulative distribution function and for continuous random variables we can have probability density function and cumulative distribution function okay so this is what i wanted to give you an idea about probability distributions forms of probability distributions and different types of probability distributions based on the type of random variables that we are dealing with okay so in my next video i will talk in detail about probability mass function and its associated cumulative distribution function okay so we will see you all in the next video with much more detailed discussions on these two things probability pmf and cdf okay so hope you guys like this video and if you think you are learning something please give it a thumbs up please comment out your reviews and share it among your peers if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe see you all in the next video happy learning bye bye